You screwed up your ACL. Guys have fought in the UFC with no ACL. You know, so it all depends who, on who was it. Uh, Rigo Rodriguez shouldn't have an ACL. Um, so, you know, you've got these, you've got different situations with different guys depending on their injuries. It's very rare, like in the NFL or most sports, where a guy goes in 100%. You know, where he doesn't have some little nagging injury or whatever. But what you don't do is you don't send a guy in to fight with an injury that's so bad that you're really putting him in danger. No matter how many main events and big, big fights you lost this year, do you respect the fact that they all stepped up and did that? Or do you feel like, gosh, I wish you guys would have told me? I do, but I, I, I would expect nothing less from those two. That's, that's the way that those two are. You know, I get some guys call up with a hangnail. They can't fight, you know what I mean? And then there's guys that, you know, could go in with one arm. It's so true. And you... You meet all kinds of different fighters. Some don't care about anything. Some feel like no matter how bad the injury is, it goes away once they step in there. You know, and, and the adrenaline starts. And, you know, it, it, there's all different types of people to fight this sport. You know, when you look at, like, Major League Baseball or the NFL, you know, Adrian Peterson was out nine months with the ATL. You know, he's back. Strasburg with the Tommy John surgery, you know, they shut him down because of concerns. So, you know, you got to think that a guy that has that kind of injury probably was not anywhere close to 100% in that. Yeah, the that ACL is a, is a crazy injury. That's That's I mean, you're kicking a lot of people. Well, it's lateral movement, too. Yeah. You barely move laterally if you, if you have that, you know, leg goes out on you. Again, but people are being spotted out with an ACL. <laughs> Did he no win? ACL whatsoever. So, who did he fight with? Do you, you know who that was? You didn't have ACL? Yeah. Um, so, you know, you never know. Different, different things for different people. Um, yeah, you, you never know. Yeah, it's, in a perfect world, you want every guy to be 100% healthy when he goes in there. No nagging injuries, no, you know. Um, another time I found out was after, uh, what's his name? He's my champion. What's his name? Uh, Dominic, uh, Bruce. 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 Yeah, Dominic Cruz. Uh, he, he went into a fight with his hand all messed up, you know? And, and, and he still threw punches like his hand wasn't messed up. That was a money punch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that kid is just, you know, you got these guys that are just tougher than nails. And Dominic Cruz is one of those guys. He's like, what breaks or what happens or whatever, I'm fighting. You know, you got guys like that. You alluded to uh, at the podium that you know you're not sure how this fight will do because of the time frame. This is a really significant fight. But why would you actually put this in this time frame when you're not sure how it will do? You never know. I don't ever know. But I mean, you know, you kind of have a feeling, hey, GSP is going to come through with a big event or somebody. GSP has been gone for a year and a half, almost two years. <laughs> right. No, I know that. But he's the biggest pay-per-view star in the sport. But you know, I, I can. I don't have to worry or guess on what he's going to do. You know what I mean? I know what he's going to. But, um, yeah, th this is one of those fights around the holidays. One thing that I, I do like, unfortunately, for all the people in the East Coast and the uh, Midwest, there's a massive snowstorm. It's shutting down flights. People can't travel. So I like when people are snowed in. That's always, that's always <laughs> good for me. <laughs> yeah. And you really have a problem. Because they're out on a And I'm giving away a motorcycle. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let me tell you what. When you, when you own a motorcycle, here's the difference, okay? You take a guy like Cain Velasquez or Junior Dos Santos, right? They've got plenty of training. Junior Dos Santos has got a kept out Range Rover, and God knows what else he has. Uh, Cain Velasquez has a bunch of cars. You don't want it to be your means of transportation, okay? Especially in Brazil. Brazil's the one place on earth you don't want to ride a fucking motorcycle, okay? I've been there. I've seen it. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. You got people zipping in and out of these things and bumper to bumper traffic, missing trucks like this. Let me tell you what, Jose Aldo has a plenty of money, okay? He can buy a car or a bus or an SUV, all right? He doesn't, you can't have a fighter in his main means of transportation be a motorcycle. That's crazy. But if one of these guys wins the Harley Davidson, Harley Davidson is a bike you take out on the weekend cruise around, you know, completely different. You do not want that to be a being or a being a thing. Dana, of course UFC 151 happened, but forgetting about 151, this is the first pay-per-view in Vegas since 148 in July, which is the longest stretch in many years. And as far as tickets go and the crowd showing up, they're always late here lately, you know, they're, they're kind of, you know, 
like the boxing crowd. Yes. What is your take? It is the fight capital. I don't think that's going to happen this time. But what is your take on Vegas as the fight capital of the world? Has it lost its esteem? Oh, I don't think so. The, the reason this is the fight capital of the world is because no matter where you go, uh, anywhere in the world, we, we sell tons of we do Boxing can't do what we do. Boxing doesn't put on fights in all these cities that we do, right? Major fights with you know television and everything else, and pay-per-view. Um, but the thing about Vegas is, it's a destination. It's a place that everybody wants to come. Actual people living here in Vegas that will be there on, on, on uh, Saturday is this. Me and Morgan. Yeah, yeah, these two. Yeah, and Hill. Yeah, you know. Other than that, it'll be people from all over the country coming in. So when you call it the fight capital of the world, more fights happen here than anywhere else in the world, and this is the destination where people will travel to see it. You're still high on it. You still think it's a, it's it definitely a good market. There's no doubt about it. Last, you know, a couple weeks ago was Pacquiao, uh, and uh, Mayweather will fight here again. All the big fights are here. And I can't recall uh, an undercard fighter, a relatively unknown undercard fighter, getting as much press as Eric Perez has gone over the last couple weeks, especially from like mainstream media outlets. Is this your big push? And obviously he's on the same card as Kane. Yeah. He's the first 100% Mexican-born fighter. Is this your big push? Are you hoping that he could be the guy to introduce you to that uh, one? Listen, it, you know, yes, he's the first 100% Mexican guy to fight. Who knows what's going to happen, you know? Is he talented? Yes. Can he go on some streak and, and win the title? That remains to be seen. And is it true that you disallowed him from wearing the Lucha Libre mask? Yeah. Why now are you allowing him to do it? Well, well, here's the thing. You guys know how I feel about guys acting like idiots walking out to the to the octagon. I can't stand it. Uh, you know, if you're going in there to fight. This isn't pro wrestling. You know, there's a, he's got a reason for why he does it. And they sat down, they explained it to me, and I'm cool with it. You know, what all the say? other goofy shit that happens, I can't stand it. And it's it just... It, it, I, to explain to you how painful it is for me to sit there and watch a guy walk, you know, 25 feet to the octagon, acting like a moron, it, it hurts me. It hurts me, and I can't stand it. What do you say? Is signaling a change in policy? This is kind no. of a one-time exception for this. Or yeah, look at it on if a you, case if by you, case if you tell me why, and you know, the, 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 those masks, you know, uh, Mexican wrestlers used to wear them, but it's a thing. It's a warrior thing, and you know, they explained it to me. I can live with that. I know, like, kind of Taurus used to have, like, a big headdress and you'd wear it way in and stuff like that, but it was, like, a, a, a pride thing as well. So, I mean, if guys talk to you and they can explain it. Yeah, to, if it makes sense to me, you're just not acting like an idiot, you're trying to come up with a different spiel every time you walk, and that's your thing, I'm cool with that. Some people say that's a good thing, though, for guys that be memorable in the market. People tell so. me that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, I leave, yeah. when I leave, they can do fucking backflips in the office, okay? <laughs> When I'm gone, someone, they can do whatever the hell they want. What about someone like Tom Lawler, who's like universally applauded for his? Yeah. Does that bother you? You know, do I love it? I don't. No, yeah. I don't love it. Uh, if that's the way you have to get attention, you should get attention by the way you fight. You know, if you're really good, that's where you'll get your attention from. Not coming in with a new shtick every time you come in. But it's, his thing doesn't bother me as much as others have. The other one, too, is Kyle Kingsbury. That uh, guy's always got a fanny pack on and some... You know, women's underwear, whatever he's doing. It, 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 th that one doesn't really bother me either. You know, and, and those two guys do come to fight every time. So, I don't know. Dana, Dana. It's, it's, it's hit or miss with me. Can I get you to say um, live at MGM.com for MGM? Get me to say, yeah. When we wrap this thing up, I'll do one for you. Okay, great. Yeah. Do you know about weigh in studio or weigh in kind of reception where maybe they can be a little bit so you can look pretty awesome or something? Yeah, I, I just, it just depends. You know, there's times when guys come up there and I'll be like, Seriously, you know, and the thing you gotta understand about the weigh-ins too—they're on TV. They were watching on TV. You know, and guys come out and act like idiots. But yeah, it's not my favorite thing. But you know, it, I guess it depends on the mood I'm in that day. Too. So if you do something really stupid, you want to hope I'm in a good mood. You got pretty fired up last night on the Rome show and the, uh, the TV segment and the government and all that. But you know, you were making a couple points there. But what's your take on you know government is involved in this sport and not other sports? Yeah, you know, if you really want to, you really want to crack down. You really want to, you know, do what you say. It's the one thing to laugh about it. It's another thing to do it. If the government got involved in, in all these other sports the way that they are in ours, you know, it would help. This thing is regulated by the. The thing that I got fired up about, and, and you know, and me and Carvel were, were were arguing about it is, don't go after the old guys, the guys that are already retired and are already gone and have played. You know, they made the money. You're spending. Gonna, everybody knew what they were doing in the fucking industry, okay? Anybody who says they didn't is a liar. 
if you really want, and, and, and the argument is, well, what to do, and they want kids to see that if this, this is what could happen, well, go after the guys now. Go after the guys that are playing now. That, those are the guys you want to go after. Those are the guys you want to block. You can't. Players you need, man. You know? It's, just, it's all a crock of shit. You either get serious and go after it, or just shut up about it and move it along. But I just hate seeing them go after the old guys. You know, you, 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 you used that government argument a long time, but I guess, you know, the drug testing expert always says that, you know, the state testing is the easiest testing to beat. Anybody who's cheating, you know, Victor Conti says you have to be a moron to fail that test. So how do you... Well, you know, the guy's a lying, two-faced piece of shit. I can't stand that guy. You're the biggest cheater in the history of the fucking sports world. And now because you can't make a living cheating anymore, you want to flip the other star side and start calling people out, point fingers? I can't believe anybody even listens to this guy. Anybody even quotes this guy. Victor Conti is a two-faced piece of shit. Well, have you heard his position on why he I don't care what his position well, is. I don't care about him. He's a fucking cheater well, and a liar. Now that, he's man. trying okay. to flip the script so that he can make a living on the other side. Well, he's a scumbag. He well, then let's bring some other people up. And look at you, yeah, you know. bring somebody credible. You know, Get somebody credible in there. That, that who would listen to? I don't know anybody else other than a guy who got caught for fucking cheating and giving all these guys steroids. Well, Dr. Goodman, then, is, is, you know, her, she has a company doing that. I mean, right. What, so I guess the argument is all So what are we is, talking about? Are we talking about fighting or are we talking about baseball and fighting. football? So I guess my argument too, okay. is you're, you're saying. So they that say we're the, government, by the, the government. government isn't strong enough to not this, to not that. they don't have the money to do the We're regulated by the fucking government. Right. Some of these places, some of these states we go to, they test the entire card. Some places are random. Some places does that main event and, and, and a few other fights that are random. Um, it's better than anybody else's. Well, I don't, want, I don't want to ruin everybody else's interview, but I guess the question that I'm asking you is the, the, the state testing is... Any expert would say it's the worst and the easiest to beat by people. They don't do carbon isotope ratio testing and all sorts of things. So you're not really finding well, out because the budget. So but it's better. But it's better in baseball or football or yeah, because they do CIR testing. Oh my god! It is. Oh my god! They random. They. they you think they randomly test? You well, think they're going to test some of their big star players? It's, and, in, it's in their CBA. That's craziness. Yeah, th I mean, if that's what. Well, people, Ryan but if that's positive, but if that's what people want to believe. And, and if they really went in there and did real testing, you know what I mean? The, gov the governments can't afford to test. How can they not afford to test? We fight here, you know, however many times a year. Floyd, Pacquiao, and a lot of other big stars fight here every year. And this, this city makes a lot of money off right, that. I agree. They don't even no, I think fund the commission pump, they turn it over to like but the pump, state. Then, then that's what they need to do. Well, I think it's great that the state's testing. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm just saying that any expert that you talk to in the drug testing field would tell you that the state testing, because of the amount of money they have and the type of testing they do, isn't as strong as other testing. So if you're saying we're regulated by the government as if that is some panacea that, oh, we're doing a great job, I would think that that's not really a fair statement because they're not really, you know, you can't say that this board isn't infested with it, uh, with. PEDs. Right. We could debate this all day. And PEDs have been around since yeah. people started making money in sports. Right. And, I, I mean, I don't know what the real answer is to crack down on this whole thing. All I know is we are regulated by the government. They come in and they test our guys. That's a fact. And however you think, if you think football and baseball are really knocking it out of the park, pun intended, you know. You're crazy. Well, Ryan Brown was the MVP, and he, he, you know, tested positive yeah. you know, after he won the MVP. Now, the, the union... But if you I, think that they were really testing all the guys in baseball, you think there'd be a fucking baseball game every day of the week? There wouldn't be, man. They'd be pulling guys up from the fucking, you know, from, from the minors every day. It would be crazy. You know, there's always going to be this thing in sports where somebody's trying to get an edge on, on the other guy. You know, and, and as, as a owner or commissioner or whatever you want to call it, you do the very best that you can do. You do the best that you can do. If you look at, the, at our business and the way that our business is run, we've got 475 fighters under contract. If you look at the shit that we do every day, we go, 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 go. And there's so much shit to do, you can't even stay on top of all of it. Now, not only are, do, do we test our guys for PEDs, uh, other illegal drugs too. Marijuana, cocaine, or any other drug that's out there. These guys get tested, and there's no penalties out there like our fucking penalties. You know, our guys have to, uh, you lose the ability to make a living for a fucking year. You know, because that's the other thing. 
if you're going to bust guys, okay, this guy just got caught. What was the penalty when he got busted? Well, well, what's his name? What did uh, Manny Ramirez make, Dave? What was his salary? $20 million? He was making $20 million. He got to spend 100 games. That's $10, $10 million. Yeah. How many times did Manny Ramirez get busted? I mean, Three. Manny, yeah. Three times. I know. Manny Ramirez got busted many, many times to the point where he left baseball, you, right, know? you know? Um, who else? Who other than Manny Ramirez? Well, Tell Manny me. Braun was the MVP last year. I mean, I, I can go through a laundry list of guys that not only got busted for PEDs, but for other illegal drugs and lost the ability yeah. to make a living. And, I, and you know, I, I guess I, it's a red herring. I don't want to bring in baseball or football only because this But this is, is one of these things that we could argue about for a week. I mean, we could literally sit here for a week and, and argue about this. This is the system that is in place in, in, in all combat sports. We're regulated by the government. Let me end, end by asking this then. Would you consider, as you know, Dr. Goodman is one that's argued that you should do, hiring a company, whether her company or some other company, <laughs> and say, you know, hers is a nonprofit, so for whatever right. reason, but, you know, hiring a company to test all your fighters randomly so that you would be saying, if I am doing the best possible job that can be done to guarantee that these guys are not fighting while well enhanced in any way. So hire her company or another company to come in and test all the fighters and they randomly. Do, and they do that like they do in the Olympics. So they test the guys like they do in the Olympics. Like so, what? So that they might call Junior and say, it's, you know, 10 days ago, hey, we're going to test you. You've got to pee in a bottle. We've got to take a blood sample, whatever it is. They do that, you know, randomly unannounced. Right. So would you consider that? I have no idea. It's something that I've never even thought of or, uh, you know, who knows. I guess one simple question maybe to follow up on that. In your mind, do you think what's being done is enough? I mean, you say what the government's doing. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's enough, or do you think at least people do need to be thinking outside of the box and maybe considering other options? Well, let me ask you a question. Here's, here's one of the other things. If you look at how we're regulated by the government, and, I, and I've said this publicly before, I do not think that the penalty should be the same for smoking marijuana as it is for taking performance-enhancing drugs. <laughs> Yet it is. It's exactly the same. If you get busted, look at, look at Diaz. Look at how long Nick Diaz is out right now, right, for marijuana. Same as a guy who's taking steroids. It's crazy. So the whole system is messed up. And I can guarantee you this, and, and you know, forget about PEDs. You get into this testing that we're talking about mm -hmm. where you randomly test these guys. You know how many guys would probably test positive for marijuana? It would be probably off the charts. Right. You know what I mean? So if you randomly tested and this came out, they'd get the same exact suspension as they did for PEDs. Then I guess they just it's it's all a big. You don't break the rules then, right? It's, I, mean, it's, yeah. I think it's stupid that you're you know penalizing a guy for marijuana. I don't even I don't even smoke marijuana. It's fucking illegal and you shouldn't do it. Right. Okay. But the guys are going to get busted. They're going to get the same suspension as they would for a PED. Right. Whereas when you're taking a performance enhancing drug, you go in and you face another fighter. You can you can hurt him. Right. You know what I mean? But for marijuana, it's 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 just crazy. So when you talk, it's so easy to sit there and say, well, here's what we should do, and here's how you fix it. There's so many flaws in the system, it's just not that easy. Mm -hmm. It's not just a, hey, would you sign up this company, and what if you did, and we could randomly test? There'd be a whole shitstorm mm -hmm. of other things that would come about. You, you, you know, I'll bet you if you did that random testing, because everybody thinks that if you did this random testing, you'd catch so many guys on PEDs, no, you'd catch more of the guys on marijuana. That's where you'd really bust a lot of guys. You know? That may be true, but I mean, then isn't it up to them, like you said about Nick, follow the rules and don't, yes. you know, it's stupid. In so, a perfect you know. world, yes. You, you think, I, you know, Nick Diaz was busted for marijuana already by the Athletic Commission. Mm -hmm. Then he comes into a fight and does it fucking again. You can't go two months without smoking weed. No, he can't, apparently. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. So there'd be so much of this shit going on, it would be craziness. Mm -hmm. It would be crazy. You would bust more guys with that than you would with performance enhancing no, drugs. Well, commissions that. don't ban. So 475 guys under contract and 400 of them will be out with, with marijuana. Commissions don't ban marijuana out of composition though, I think. Even if the Nevada commission found a guy testing positive for marijuana, but it was yeah. we, months before the fight, it, nothing, there would be no. That's not true. Yeah, it, on the water depends, code, that is true. But it depends on no fucking penalty. nanograms or however this shit no, works. No. Listen, I'm not an expert on this shit, but it is illegal. You can't do it. And as he got closer to the fight, you know, that would be one thing. If we were testing, we would say, dude, we just, you just tested positive for me. But this happened to me already. Mm. This already happened to me. I, I talk to these guys and I'll say, please tell me that you're not smoking marijuana. You know, you know you're going to be tested for all this shit. No, 
no, I'm not doing it. I'm this, that, that. They're going to fucking tell me. And I tell these guys, I'm not the police. I'm not the commission. I'm not your dad. You can be honest with me. Let me know what's going on. And I had the same fucking problem with Stefan Bonner. You know what I mean? Stefan Bonner, how do you not tell me that when I pick you to take this fight? I get, listen, you're, you're, you're a grown man doing your own fucking thing. You don't have a fight planned. You're down there wrestling, doing pro wrestling, whatever you're doing. But when I call you, right, and we've been in business together for a long time, I care about you, I respect you, I've always done right by you. When I call you and offer you that fight, don't fucking lie to me. Don't lie to me. Did you ask him specifically? I'm not talking to him still. No. We still haven't talked yet. <laughs> but he knows. He's a smart guy. Stefan Bonner isn't stupid. He's a smart guy. But you know what, you know what you're going to do? You're going to jump on the money. Is it hurting him that he hasn't come out and said anything really yet? You know, the, the guy's... Uh, when something like this happens to you, you're embarrassed. You're ashamed. You know, there's a lot of shit that goes on when, when this goes down. I'm mad at him. I haven't talked to him, you know. He gave up trying to talk to me. I mean, I'll, it's not like I'm never going to talk to Stefan Bonner again. I will, but, you know, I, I'm upset. But, it, it, you know, it's easy to sit there and say, well, what if you did this and what if you did that? It's, it's so much more complicated than that. The whole system is a mess. It needs to be, you know, do I want to stop PEDs? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what the discussion was on Rome the other day. My thing was, never mind going after these, these guys. It would be, be like going after Hagler and... All these guys that used to fight and trying to drag them into court and they spend a bunch of money and, and then you catch them and well, so what? What did you do? You just ripped this guy down, you blew a bunch of his money and you tarnished his name. What, what good does that do the sport today? It's, it's a big smoke and mirror bullshit show that they're doing the government with all that fucking stupid shit. You want to do it? Go after guys right now. Bring them before Congress. And, and ask them if they've ever played steroids and if they've ever taken steroids or whatever. Then what you'll see is, and you really want to affect the children, the kids, kids are going to be like, holy shit, they actually just took this guy out of the game, ripped him apart, and, you know, wow, may, may, we better be careful. Maybe we shouldn't do this. Because that's how you stop it. The way that you stop it is you get these guys that are coming up in high school, you know, and, and even if it's for MMA, guys that are starting to train young and they're like, Man, if I get on this junk, I'm always going to have to be on it, number one. That, that's a fact. If you, if you get on it, you always have to be on it. You screw your body up so bad, not only physically, but mentally. And then, um, you know, that's where you have to stop it. The whole government thing, what they did to the baseball players, is just a fucking freak show. It's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Dana, have you ever it's heard disgusting. of a fighter named McNewell? There's one arm. Yeah. Uh, who is missing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would you ever Never. think he's undefeated? No. He's being top, you know, not top guys, but you know, he's a... Yeah. No. It's hard to fight here with two arms. You know what I mean? This he is the... shown that he can compete. Yeah. Here? Well, no, obviously not. He doesn't fight, but ultimate fighter. Would you ever look at him or... Maybe. 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 I don't know. I, you know? I don't know. Where has he fought? Has he ever fought he's in Nevada or any of the big states? XFC. I mean, it's Where's not, that? Boston. Florida. You know, yeah. It's on uh, Access TV. He is their champion. So, you know, he beat a guy recently who... He's yeah. other top guys. He beat some the former UFC fighters. Let me tell you what. There's who, who did he beat? Who who was there? He beat at least one former UFC fighter. I'm not sure if it was former. I'm not sure. But Ten and zero. Uh, beat a guy who fought Eddie Alvarez. Kind of yeah. tough. Yeah, that's tough, man. That this isn't. I mean, there's guys that are out there that we bring in that are that are considered top guys into the Ultimate Fighter that don't really ever pan out and make it. But if he tried out, would you even let him try out? I don't know. I, would the state of Nevada let him fight? Would the state of California let him fight? You know, would some of these bigger athletic commissions let him fight? You know, maybe he can get away with that in some of these other states, but... Uh, Nick Limbo lets him fight for what it's worth. Yeah? yeah he's oh, there you go. That's a real one, so... Florida. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I have no idea. That fighting with one arm is just craziness to me. I mean, it's just... Limbo said he doesn't consider him to have one arm because it goes past his elbow. Yeah, so... Oh. He has an arm past yeah, his elbow? Like, yeah. I don't know, man. That's That's the, I, don't know. I don't even know what to say to that. That's crazy. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. And he's a good kid. You spent a few months telling us, talk to somebody else about Strike Force because you're not the guy. Now that the cat's out of the bag on that whole thing, can you kind of talk to us about what went on behind the scenes? I'm still not the guy. <laughs> I'm the guy. I, and, and I, again, I talked to Ariel about this yesterday. I could. I, don't, I, don't I could keep you guys here for four and a half hours. 
and go crazy. You have a, you'd have some real good stuff. Either that or PEDs. Yeah. One yeah. Or yeah. Are you at least glad that it's kind of over? And I'm over? so glad it's over. And then secondly, when you guys made the announcement that that would be the last show on Showtime, kind of the, the implication there was that that's the last show period, but that was never really officially announced. This is going to be the last show period. For Strike Force? Yeah. Yes. Okay. What was there any kind of stuff? Because I've heard rumblings that maybe they retained either the name, Showtime retained library rights or anything like that. Just um, yeah, they do have the, they have the library rights for a couple of years, I think. Yeah. So they own that, which is fine. Replace for a couple of years, yeah. and then you get it back as part of the, the settlement, basically. Yeah. You can use that sort of to promote sites. Mm -hmm. You cannot. You can. Oh, you can. Yeah. So what what rights do they have? They the well, they they have the rights to the library too. Oh, they can use it. Yeah. Every year. Scott Remember, we didn't do this deal. We, we, we bought into this deal. Can you at least, maybe at this point, tell us what the plan was that you would never tell us? You always said, sit back, boys. I got this all figured out. I know how it's going to work. Well, the, the strike force, I mean, you know, I, I see a lot of shit on, on the Internet and stuff. People saying, uh, this is exactly what we knew was going to happen. They bought it to, to bury it and do all this stuff. Any of you guys that were around me during that time, that was absolutely not the plan. I was pumped up about it and, and you know, looking forward to getting into it. But, uh Nah. Can't share what the vision was? Nah. It's just, it's over, man. Just, I'm just happy it's over. Was what the problem Espinosa or somebody beyond that? <laughs> yeah, there's problems over there. Does Scott have a, like a, a non compete over? I have no clue. I, that I don't know. <clears throat> you, right. did you, do you think that's the last promotion you'll ever buy? I mean, does this leave a sour taste in your mouth? Or would that, you know, would you still evaluate well, on a case by case moving forward? None of the companies we bought have been, you know, perfect except for the WC. WC was a great, great move, great transition. You know, er everything worked out great with that. Um, but all the other ones, you know, they were what they were. So does it turn you off to entertaining the, the option moving forward if you ever saw another opportunity? No, it depends. I don't know. I would never say never on that. Will Coker have a, a role like in Paris after or is he not going to be a part of it? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Yeah. Not sure. Will you be in the city? No. Hawaii. Hawaii? Yeah, I'm sorry, I misunderstood Ariel's question. I thought he asked if I was going to the last strike force, and I said no. Are you going to do a UFC event in Hawaii? Was my question. No. Please. Huh? Please. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. What? I'm sorry. You said in the last Metro PCS chat that you guys would probably come to Puerto Rico and come to Puerto Rico and back for you to the big one. Rico, Good. I got a new very cool present for you from the fans, but I want to ask you: Is there a tentative <coughs> date for that? No, Not yet. No. Okay. But we're going to do it. We'll, we'll be there by 2014. And, and what other new countries that you've never visited? I mean, Puerto Rico would be a combat club. What other new countries that UFC has never been? Well, there? Well, India. We're, we're, we're working on India right now. Our, our, our event in China was a huge success, so we're working on really big deals over in China right now. Um, China was really big. It was a home run. So. The UFC is going to Mexico uh, next month for a casting tour. Sometimes. Yep. <clears throat> it used to be a, the ultimate part right. What's going on with that? What's the deal? That's what we're doing. We're going down there, we're casting, and we're, we're working on an ultimate fight in Mexico. Okay, so will it be all Mexican? Or I hope so. Okay. hope I can find enough good Mexicans for it to be all Mexican. I'm pretty sure if you don't, we can do... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not a bad idea. Hey, does that mean, might have to do that. Does that mean the broadcast deal is signed if you're already casting for it, or is it just kind of a tentative thing? We're working on it. We're Why, you know, Mexico loves fighting so much. I know in 11, Marcus Pacquiao was in the morning radio show. In 12, I, yeah, I guess uh, Mosley and uh, Pacquiao outdid the Olympic soccer game. Uh, between Mexico and Brazil, you know, rating. So they obviously love fighting, and you know, you've had trouble getting into that market, and it doesn't seem to compute. Have you come to an idea why that has been, why you haven't had success, given the love of fighting there? Yeah, the, the U.K. loves it, too. We've had trouble getting a deal there, too. When you're dealing with some of these countries where, you know, um, you know, five families run all of Mexico, you know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and, and uh, the U.K., there's one powerful network there that you have to deal with. It's just... It's so crazy. The difference is the same thing in Brazil. You know, you got Global down there, but it's so big in Brazil. It exploded so big and so fast. We were able to get it done there. I mean, Brazil is a, a much easier place to do business. Are you talking to Televisa and, uh, and TV Azteca or some other? We're talking to everybody down there right now. So we'll, uh, we'll get this thing 
squared away, get the, the ultimate fighter uh, running down there. And again, I, once we get the right deal, I know I know it'll be big. I know it'll take off. Same thing with the UK. If we had the right TV deal in the UK, it would be huge there right now. Do you think Remember Mexico we would be a Brazil, another Brazil? Yeah. Oh, I definitely do. So you think the fans are there, just not the TV deal? The fans are definitely there. They're absolutely positively there. Yeah. That's that's not a concern at all. Quick follow-up on Scott Coker real quick. Sorry to go back to that, but when you say you don't know if he's going to stay with the company, is that because it's not your call or because you're I haven't dealt with that. So you I literally took myself out of this thing 100%. I have nothing to do with it. I obviously, big picture stuff I'm involved in, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm involved in pieces and parts that I want to be involved in with that thing. Um, the fun stuff, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the fun stuff for me is uh, I don't know I don't even want to get in. Don't talk to me about strikers. Going on, I'll end up saying something. What about the problem? Melinda, shit storm. They're all a coming. Shot. They're all coming. Will he get a title Here's, shot the, here's what's happened. The, the, what has happened to the fighters in strike force is horrible. You know, the way that this thing went down and what's happened to these guys and these guys have been very patient and I feel sorry for them and I'm just happy that they're coming into the UFC now. When you yeah. say all, you mean absolutely everybody on the roster? Well, really the ones that we're going to bring over. Okay. Everybody that ends up coming to the UFC. Um, yeah. What's happened over there has been completely shitty. Do you think Gilbert will have uh, to fight somebody first before a shot at Benson? Or um, no. Gilbert? It'll probably come right in and get a title shot. Again, we'll see. Can you talk about, you know, and you talked about all the problems in 2012. What the tangible effect on the company was, you know, obviously we know the cancellation of 151, but, you know, was it ticket sales, was it money, or was it something more ephemeral, you know, where you can't put your finger on it, but you know it's there? You know, yeah. as bad as as, as uh, 12 was, you know, we still had a good year. Still had uh, plenty of milestones, you know, pay-per-view buys, ratings. I mean, ev- everything was still, if there's anything that 2012 showed us, any of the people who were questioning and doubting, the UFC business model, 2012 proved that this thing's here to stay. We don't know what the pay-per-view numbers are, but were they similar to 11? Were they up? Were they down? Were they flat? They were down. Yeah, they, they were definitely down. Um, but nothing nothing Not horrible. Hard. I'll tell you what. If you look at the year we had, 7 of 11 main events or 8 of 12, whatever the number was, I can't remember. You know, we still had a great year, you know. Um, so... What do you judge a great year on? Do you judge it on pay-per-view sales, ticket sales, or quality of fights, or what is it? Well, if, if you look at the business, the business part of it would be ticket sales, pay-per-view, um, obviously television ratings, all, all those things as far as the business goes. But as far as what I like to do and what we like to deliver, we like to deliver big fights, great fights, fights that make people walk away and go, God, I'm glad I went to this event. I'll go to this event again. And I think the, 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 one, the one fight last year where we really didn't deliver and, and, and we had a lot of people unhappy, upset, was Calgary. You know, so I, I have to figure out a strategy to get back to Calgary and deliver what we should have delivered the first time. Because I always, one thing that I always know, card falls apart, okay, we get to work, we build another card, and I always know that when the people walk out of the arena, that the guys are going to deliver and people are going to go, hey, it wasn't the fight that I thought I was going to, but we had a great time. The fights were awesome. And we just didn't deliver in Calgary. So, Just one other question in terms of merchandise. Do you see like merchandise sales spike if, in terms of when certain guys fight? Like, Do you sell more when George fights or when Chael fights as opposed to other guys? You know, Is there spikes like that? It's funny that you asked me about that, about merchandise, because you know, obviously we have merchandise. We're in the merchandise business. I, I literally... I never look at those numbers. I could care less what the numbers are. I'm, I'm not a merchandise guy. I'm, I'm in the fight business, man. It's like, I just, it's just not my thing. I could care less. I guess to kind of build on. shirts we're selling. I was going to say, I guess to kind of build on that, I mean, you said it wasn't a bad year, but a couple executive level employees aren't with the company anymore. And a lot of people thought maybe that was a signal that, hey, they're trimming back, they're trying to cut costs because there's issues right now. Are you saying that that's not the case? It was more just built? Absolutely not the case. Yeah. We, we had some uh, we had some housework to do. Is uh, the picket lineman fight? I, I know your answer is going to be we'll have to see what happens on Saturday night. 
where do those guys fit? Where does the winner fit in, in kind of the, the family title picture? I love Pickett, man. I'm actually a right. huge Pickett fan. I, I, you know, it's funny. I, it's always weird when I say I'm a fan of some guy. I'm a huge fan of Pickett. I love the way that this guy fights. I love his style. And uh, Wyman, wow. What he did in the last event, I'm really happy for him. And uh, it's going to be an awesome fight. Uh, where does it stand? I, you know, I told you, I, I love Pickett. Love his style, and, and, and Wyman, you know, coming off his last win, if he can beat Pickett too, it's a big fight for both of these guys. Both of them are kind of of the mind that the way the division is right now, with the champ out and having to have an interim title fight, maybe another interim title fight after that, that they would be the next guy. Yeah, it, it, it's possible. Like you said, the champ's out, and, and, and right now... <clears throat> The interim champ is the man. He's going to be the guy defending the title. And another quick one on that division. Zach Makovsky just got released from Bellator. He was a champion over there. Are you guys looking at him at all? Is that somebody you want to bring in, especially with the champ here? I don't even know yeah. who he is. Okay. I've but never even heard his name before. Yeah. Right. Sorry, Zach. Yeah. Joe, so, um, ask, Joe, Joe and Sean probably know who he is. Yeah. Ask them. I guess one guy you do know, Eddie Alvarez. Is there any update on that situation? Um, yeah, I just don't know if I can talk about it. Yeah. I must be signing because you could talk about it since with them. Um, no, that, that's not what's going on. I, I think it's in matching period. Yeah, it's going to get ugly. The ultimate fight on Tuesday is how, how much of that was, was you picking that date and how much of that was Fox and me. that was all you? 100% me. And, and what I love about those guys is, yeah, I've said this to you guys a million times, FX loved us on Friday nights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it was good for them, it wasn't good for me. And, uh, they're good partners, and they promised me, said, let us try to build this Friday thing in a way that you'll be happy with your numbers. And uh, if we don't, we'll move you to another night. And they did. They kept their word, and, you know, the, the Fox group is, they're the best people in television to work with. So they're kind of like more than one day of, of the week that you guys would looking at beyond Tuesday? Yeah, you know, not Tuesday, Friday, Wednesday. Saturday, yeah, I, I like Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh -huh. I'm not a fan of Thursday, Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're a big fight fan. Uh, are you playing the DVR the Bellator or reality show? <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'm being honest, and everybody always calls, but I've never seen Bellator once. I've never really? watched it. Yeah, you just said it's going to get ugly. What do you mean by that? It's going to get ugly. I don't know. I don't know if I can talk about it. If I could talk about it, I would. I think it's going to get ugly. That's not the Dana White we know. Huh? I know, man. This is crazy, right? What's going to get ugly? What's going to get ugly? What's the what do you think it's going to get ugly? What do you think I'm talking about? Eddie Alvarez? How, how would he get ugly with Eddie Alvarez? Yeah, I don't know. He's always trying to like spin shit and like say it in a different <laughs> way so that I'll say something else. And... He's usually successful, too. Yeah, usually. Yeah. Yeah. Not uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> do you think moving the ultimate fighter to Tuesdays and the possibility of the bigger demographics for MMA and UFC maybe sitting at home that night will pan out and ladies will go <clears> to the roof? You know, different to the last couple of seasons. Well, I hope so, yeah. I, I think the Tuesday nights are a better night for us. Tuesday nights at 9 o'clock, we're 9 to 10, we're leading into uh, Justified. And, um, yeah, I just think more of our people at home on Tuesday nights watching TV than they are on Friday nights at 10. Okay, go, go, going back, because they brought the merchandising thing, and I have gotten this complaint for a year from fans in Puerto Rico that they, they have gone to the UFC store and they see all kinds of international t-shirts, but not Puerto Rico. And sometimes there are countries that, that have their international t-shirts, they never hold an event. And a lot of the fans in Puerto Rico feel that UFC 8 in Puerto Rico is one of the most crucial events in the first in the first half of the of UFC. Is there any plans to maybe put this into work? Done. Done? Done. I'll make it happen. Yeah. It'll be a Puerto Rico t-shirt. Good. Thank you. Okay. Who's around? Somebody hit, right hit, hit Andrea, yeah, hit anybody and tell them we need a Puerto Rico t-shirt ASAP. <laughs> Done. Can't make sure he gets one. Done. <laughs> well, I'm not, I've lost 100 pounds in a year because we're doing big things this year and I need to change my age, so I'm not 2XL anymore. So All right, sure perfect. Team. We'll get you a medium. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go crazy now. I'm wearing a medium inside, so I'm, I'm almost there. <laughs> Good. Northwest Indiana. Huh? T-shirt too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bro. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks for time.